They say in space, no one can hear you scream. Well, when you watch Alien Romulus, no one will hear you clinch. The following is a world-class bullshitters exclusive. The Alien franchise has captivated audiences for decades with its terrifyingly suspenseful atmosphere, iconic creature design that looks like a, well, you know, and the relentless struggle for survival in space. But in recent years, it's been a bit terrible. The Alien franchise is back with another entry, and it's part thrill ride, part nostalgia trip, and part haunted house. Does it work? Stay tuned to find out. But before we dive into the latest entry, let's talk about how we got here. The Alien franchise started with a bang back in 1979 with Alien, the sci-fi horror masterpiece that made us all afraid of indigestion. And then in 1986, Aliens came along. Arguably the best sequel ever made. Aliens cranked up the action while keeping the terror intact. But then after that, things got... dicey. Alien 3 arrived with a thud, killing off beloved characters and leaving fans scratching their heads. Alien Resurrection tried to bring back Ripley, literally, but ended up just resurrecting confusion. Then came the crossover disasters, Alien vs. Predator and Alien vs. Predator Requiem, which were more like intergalactic dumpster fires than proper films, but we'll talk about them never. And let's not forget Prometheus and Alien Covenant, which promised to answer all of our burning questions, but instead gave us more reasons to question the franchise's existence. So, when Alien Romulus was announced, I'll admit, I wasn't hopeful at all. I wanted the Neil Blomkamp film. And then I saw the trailer and thought, hmm, this could be good. I wondered if it could be the film that would reinvigorate the series. The answer, folks, is something that may surprise you. But before we surprise you, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you have your bell notification turned on all so you don't miss any WCBS content. And without any further ado, let's review Alien Romulus. Alien Romulus is directed by Fetty Alvarez. Alvarez gained recognition for his feature films like the remake of The Evil Dead and Don't Breathe. His films are notable for their claustrophobic atmosphere, which is perfect for Alien. Right off the bat, Romulus nails the tone. This is a horror movie through and through. No pretenses, no half measures. The film's atmosphere is oppressive, a kind of claustrophobic dread that makes the original so iconic. The setting and design feel authentically alien. Now this film does what other legacy sequels fail to do. Alien Romulus feels like it takes place in the same universe as the original. This film is able to capture that. Everything from set design to font usage, Romulus is able to tap into our subconscious and deliver an alien film that feels like an alien film. We get our ugly lived in universe. We get our Weyland Yutani. We get it all. Which is nice because if they're going to milk these things, at least do it the right way. At its core, Alien is a horror film in space and Romulus is no different. They got the right director for this film. At times, Alien Romulus is pretty scary, with one moment in particular being very jarring, but in a very good way. Most of the characters are just there to die. The relationship between the lead Rain and Andy the Android was interesting to watch. The synthetic was programmed by Rain's long lost father, and her relationship with him is surprisingly wholesome and offers an interesting parallel to the Ripley Newt relationship from Aliens. At times, Andy can be a bit much, but he's surprisingly lovable and annoying at the same time. The remaining four characters are just there to die, and it's pretty great. The kills are something else. I won't spoil all of them, but there's one character who gets waterboarded with acid, and it was awesome to see pulled off so realistically. And that's what I'd call a gnarly death. Now, that's not the only gnarly scene in this film. There's another one towards the end that I will probably never forget because it's a scene where a woman gives birth to an alien human hybrid and it is gory it's got blood gushing out it's everything you think it would be and it shows all of it and then it grows into this disgusting looking creature now folks you know that i'm an artist i like to draw beautiful things i also like to draw horrific things but this alien human hybrid was unsettling to look at so bravo to the designer it's rare for me to feel something when i watch this but it was nasty. And speaking of things that are nasty, this film is just as suggestive as you think. Now I know the popcorn bucket is a bit freaky, but wait until you watch the movie. There was a scene in this movie where I was convinced that I was looking at a wall with some female genitalia. All of it, right on the wall. Every layer. And then an alien head went in and out of it. So kudos to the filmmakers for pushing the R rating on this film. 
it is that level of nasty. So you get the gore, you get the body horror, you get the suspense, the claustrophobia, the jump scares, all of it. Alien Romulus was really fun to watch. But it's not all acid blood and glory. The film leans a little too hard into nostalgia, and it's not always the best way. The Reeboks are back, so is the Pulse Rifle, but the latter, it feels a bit forced. And don't get me started with this. They actually reused the line, get away from her you bitch. I hated it. Reusing iconic lines isn't clever, it's lazy. It's like if they decided to throw a here's looking at you kid in the next Fast and Furious movie. You just shouldn't do certain things. I really, really hated that part. It's just like an RKO out of nowhere. You're watching something pretty good, pretty intense, and then this happens and it sucks you right out of the movie and the luster wears off. Then you find yourself focused on all the other shortcomings and you're left a little disappointed with the film. And the disappointment doesn't end there. There's the return of the alien from the first film. Yes, the one Ripley supposedly killed by sucking it into space. It turns out it didn't die. It just floated off to cause more havoc on another ship. Knowing Ripley didn't really kill the alien makes that iconic ending a little less satisfying, doesn't it? It's like when you watch Star Wars and you find out that Darth Vader didn't really kill Palpatine. Somehow he returned. This attempt to tie everything together ends up feeling messy and cheapens the impact of the original film. That didn't work. While we're talking about things that don't work, let's talk about Rook. The character is a digital recreation of Ian Holm. Bringing back a dead actor is always a risky move, and while the effects team did a commendable job, the result is still a bit off. It's definitely Ian Holm circa 1979, but it's still not there. It's not quite Uncanny Valley, but it's pretty close. And the fact that they did it just to bring back someone for the original film feels unnecessary. Everyone else is either dead or frozen, so this was their only way to bring back an original character. And I know Rook isn't Ash, but outside of the name, he's Ash. Some would call this a clever workaround to a problem, but I think it's a problem Hollywood makes for itself. Alien Romulus also suffers from what I call legacy sequel syndrome, trying to be both a sequel and a remake at the same time. We've seen this before with Star Wars The Force Awakens, and like that film, Romulus hits many of the same beats of the original Alien just with enough new material to keep it from being a total retread. It's familiar, sure, but it's not Alien Covenant bad. So here's the real question on everyone's mind. Is Romulus the worst Alien movie? No. No, it is not. But let's be clear. Nothing, and I mean nothing, is ever topping Alien or Aliens. Those films are the gold standard. So let's talk about the rest of the franchise, which is a mixed bag at best. Going from worst to best, I'm going to go Alien Covenant, Prometheus, AVP Requiem, Alien Resurrection, Alien 3, Alien vs. Predator, Alien Romulus, and then the original Alien and Aliens are tied for first. Alien Romulus lands surprisingly high, but that doesn't mean it's going to be an instant classic. It's not great, but it's pretty good. It's a good blend of horror and action and unique set pieces. There's this one with a zero-gravity acid escape, it's really cool, so just go ahead and watch that for yourself. And like I said a moment ago, the film genuinely feels like it's part of the Alien universe, something other legacy sequels often fail to capture. However, there is one last thing that might put you off. Romulus does lean a little heavy on the messaging. The android allegory is a bit on the nose, and while sci-fi films have always been a vehicle for social commentary, there are moments where it feels like the message outweighs the story. The capitalism critique in particular was a bit too blatant for my taste. Despite these flaws, Alien Romulus is still a damn good time. The social elements, while noticeable, don't detract too much from the overall experience. The film is a worthy addition to the Alien franchise, and yes, I'll be watching this one again. So if you're a fan of acid-blooded terror and don't mind a little nostalgia, give Alien Romulus a watch. Just don't expect it to outshine the originals, because nothing ever will. So folks, that was my review of Alien Romulus. I liked it. I want to know what you guys think if you've watched it, and if you're going to watch it based on this review, let me know down in the comments below. While you're down there, tell me your favorite Alien film. You know what? Actually, go ahead and rank them for me. If you've seen them all, rank them. If you've seen at least two of them, rank them as well. I like to know what you guys like to watch. If you want to watch Aliens with us, become a patron. This week, we're going to have our Patreon watch-along 
available. We did it live here on the channel, and for our members, you're able to watch that live stream. But if you're a patron at the $5 and up tier, you're going to be able to listen to the commentary. And at the $10 tier, you're going to be able to watch the film along with us. So, folks, that was Alien Romulus. It's time to get out of here. I'll be back next time with more. But in the meantime, be smart, be safe, be cool, but always be excellent to each other.